Hello everyone and welcome back to The Awakening with Kelvin Peary. I am your host Kelvin and this is another episode of our ongoing series Bridges to Prosperity. Thank you for joining me once again as we continue to explore the key themes shaping Zambia's future. Last week we reflected on Zambia at 60, asking the tough questions about where we went wrong and the lessons we've gathered over six decades of independence. We delved into some of the missed opportunities, the impact of corruption and the need for bold change to secure a brighter future. If you haven't caught that episode yet, I encourage you to check it out. It sets the stage for the conversation we're having today. This week we're building on that theme as we head toward the 24th of October, a date that holds great significance for every Zambian. In just about two weeks, we will be marking Zambia's 60th independence anniversary. As we prepare for this milestone, it's important to not only reflect on where we are now, but also to look back at the journey that brought us here. Over the next few episodes, we will examine Zambia's leadership across the First, Second and Third Republics, taking a closer look at the leaders who shaped each era, their values, their challenges, and the lessons we can draw from their time in power. So let's dive in, starting with the First Republic. It's the First Republic. The First Republic of Zambia began in 1964 when we gained independence from colonial rule. During this time, Zambia had a multi-party system, allowing different political parties to coexist and represent the diverse voices of our young nation. Dr. Kenneth Konda, as Zambia's first president, was a unifying figure who focused on building a foundation of national unity and establishing key institutions. His motto, One Zambia, One Nation, became a rallying cry for a newly independent country. During the First Republic, we saw progress in areas like education, infrastructure and health. But with growth came challenges managing a multi-party democracy in a new nation was not easy. Political tensions, economic struggles and external pressures began to mount, leading to the decision to move to a one-party state in the next era. As we look back on the First Republic, we ask ourselves what lessons can we learn from Dr. Conda's vision and the challenges of those early years. His dedication to national unity is a legacy that remains relevant, but the experience also teaches us the importance of inclusive governance and maintaining a balance between unity and political diversity. The Second Republic The Second Republic, which began in 1973, marked a significant shift in Zambia's political landscape. During this period, Zambia became a one-party state under the United National Independence Party UNIP, led by Dr. Konda. The idea behind this transition was to strengthen national unity by eliminating political divisions and focusing on a single vision for the country. In many ways, this era was characterized by centralization and control as the government sought to maintain stability and steer the nation through economic difficulties. Zambia's economy faced significant challenges due to falling copper prices, rising debt and the impact of regional conflicts in southern Africa. While the one-party system helped to maintain political stability for a time, it also limited political freedom and stifled opposition voices. The lack of political competition made it harder to hold leadership accountable and over time public discontent grew. From the Second Republic, we learned the importance of balance between unity and freedom, between stability and openness. It reminds us that democracy thrives when there is space for diverse opinions and healthy debate, even as we work toward a common goal. The Third Republic In 1991, Zambia transitioned into the Third Republic, marking a return to multi-party democracy. 
This shift came as Zambians called for greater political freedom, accountability and economic reforms. The movement for multi-party democracy, MMD, led by Frederick Chiluba, won the elections, ending nearly three decades of UNIP's rule. The Third Republic brought about significant changes, including economic liberalization and the privatization of many state-owned enterprises. The goal was to revitalize the economy, encourage private investment, and improve living standards for Zambians. However, the rapid pace of these reforms came with challenges, such as job losses and increased inequality. While the return to multi-party democracy was a welcome change, the Third Republic also faced issues of governance, including corruption and political tensions. Each subsequent leader in this era, from Wanawaza's focus on anti-corruption to Sata's infrastructure drive, brought different priorities, but the underlying challenges of economic stability, governance and social inclusion remained. The Third Republic offers valuable lessons on the complexities of managing democracy and economic reform. It reminds us that progress is possible when leaders are held accountable and when the public actively engages in shaping the direction of the nation. However, it also highlights the need for long-term planning and inclusive development to ensure that progress benefits all Zambians. Moving forward, what Zambia needs now? As we reflect on the leadership across these three republics, it becomes clear that Zambia's future depends on how well we learn from our past. The leaders of the first, second and third republics each had strengths and faced their own unique challenges. But one thing remains constant Zambia's need for visionary, accountable leadership that prioritizes the well-being of its people above all else. Moving forward, we must embrace transparency and accountability. The fight against corruption must be a priority if we are to regain public trust and ensure that our resources benefit the people. Focus on economic diversification. We can no longer afford to rely heavily on one sector, such as copper, it's time to invest in agriculture, tourism, technology and renewable energy. Invest in education and innovation. Our young population is our greatest asset and by investing in education and creating opportunities for innovation, we can build a Zambia that is competitive on the global stage. Strengthen democracy. Our democracy is still young and it needs nurturing. We must continue to uphold the principles of freedom, fairness and justice to ensure that every Zambian has a voice in shaping our future. As we head toward the 24th of October, let us use this time not just for celebration but for deep reflection. It's an opportunity to chart a new course for Zambia One that honors our past while embracing the promise of a better future. Thank you for joining me on this journey through Zambia's history and leadership. As we continue our countdown to the 24th of October, I hope you'll join me in reflecting on what kind of Zambia we want to build in the years to come. Remember to subscribe to Building Dreams in Africa if you haven't already and share this episode with those who are passionate about seeing Zambia thrive. Let's keep the conversation going and work together to build the Zambia we all dream of. Until next time, stay awake, stay informed and stay committed to building a better Zambia.